Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all once again to another Wednesday night Bible study. And if my calculations are correct, and I mean by my calculations, by if I'm able to, to look at a calendar of what today's date is, and then count backwards all the way to March of 2020 when we first recorded a Wednesday night Bible study, then this is our 70th Wednesday night Bible study that we have recorded. And let me say, boy, what a ride. If, if you can remember and go all the way back with me, this right here was actually filmed in the cafe. And this is the first Wednesday night Bible study that we had recorded. And, and if I could give you one word to describe this, I'll say nerve-wracking. And I say nerve-wracking because the only other person in the room is preacher David Clark, and he's like two foot away from me with his iPhone <laughs> filming. This was my first Wednesday night Bible study that I ever did at Boone's Creek Christian. Moving forward, we decided to start doing these conversational style uh, Bible studies, which went really well, and I will tell you it brings back a whole lot of memories because what you do not see in this one is poor Carrie Gunnan held a, a cell phone, iPhone once again, for about 20 minutes and would try to zoom in and zoom out and, and just have the camera work perfect. And we recorded that first one, hit play on it, and Carrie actually recorded it in slow motion. So, so that's what happened on this one. Uh, we went past the conversational Bible studies, and boy, I thought, like, this is it. Like, there cannot be any better quality that happens in these recordings moving forward because not only did I have a TV where I could give the scripture, but also I had this uh, whiteboard. As you can see, there's an illustration. You guys know how good I am at drawing. And, and I got to use the TV and the whiteboard. The problem we ran into with this one, this is downstairs in our lower office, and it's right on the road, so every now and then you'd hear these big trucks <laughs> driving by. Or, nine times out of ten, somebody would walk in the front door right into the middle of, of while we were filming. And then, so what happened, we decided to change things up a little bit more and just I'll let the picture speak for itself, right? That's really good quality filming that we had going on there. Um, these are all little individual backgrounds. And boy, if you knew how hard it was to set each one of these up without having gaps in between it and get the good shot, very tough. I will say lots of times setting up, I was in my flesh and then I would have to get into the spirit. I guess that's bad to say it that way. Use the spirit of God to, to try to teach. But obviously we had to change these because you'll notice at the bottom that was 2020. So when we moved on to 2021, we, we had to change, and we filmed a few of these before, and boy, that, that looks like movie star stuff, right? If you look at the blue background, I actually believe we filmed these just a little bit before 2020 because I think it's after Joy watched this, that's when she decided, yes, that's the man I want to marry. <laughs> but anyways... We uh, go on, and obviously what you're looking at today, and boy, I like the gray shirts. Huh? I've got a gray shirt on today as well. But um, this is what we, we ha have moved on to. And uh, the reason that I open up tonight this way is to let all of you know, and, and pay attention to me, this will be the last uh, recorded Wednesday night Bible study uh, for, for just a little while. And now before you start throwing the remotes at the TV or your iPads across the room, uh, let me explain to you why. Uh, next Wednesday, I will be leaving for the Dominican Republic with uh, Steve and Jamie Johnson on a missions trip. Uh, that Steve and Jamie obviously are from our church. And um, we get to go spend a week right here in Porta Plata, that's in the Dominican Republic, uh, doing some evangelism. And then after that, we're going to go spend three days down here in uh, Santo Domingo. And that's where we'll be uh, visit the mission that's called Kids for Christ. It's a mission that uh, Jamie is a really big part of. So uh, we definitely uh, covet your prayers as we go and minister during this trip. So what that does, though, is that puts me out for the next two Wednesdays, and that puts us, when I come back, into the middle of August, which leads to my next announcement, which is starting Wednesday, September 8th at 5.30, mark your calendars, we will be meeting again for in-person Wednesday night 
Bible study. There'll be no more recording. We'll be together and meeting in, in person. So uh, we'll have some more announcements about everything that's going to be going on in that uh, coming up uh, at church and in the newsletters and in the bulletin. So make sure you pay attention uh, to that. Uh, but the reason I started out tonight's lesson is I wanted to reminisce about all the previous lessons uh, from the year, for the last year and a half. And what it was is I, I wanted you to notice something. And what I hope you noticed, and I hope it did happen, is that the quality of the video changed uh, throughout each kind of season, I guess, that we were in. I felt like the quality kept getting just a, a little bit better. The quality of what was shown out here, it changed. And like I said, I would say it changed for the better. Okay, so here's the question. Uh, are you ready for this? Have you? Have you changed? Over the last year and a half, have, is what people see on the outside, has it changed? Has it changed for the better? And, and I'm not talking about like uh, whether or not you lost weight or whether or not you gained weight, your, your hair color or, or your hair length. I'm, I'm talking about what's here, right? What people see on the outside. Because what is it that, that Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 14? He says, hey, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds, and then what will happen? Then they will glorify our Father who is in heaven. So, so here's the question. Have you been transformed in His love? And see, the only way that you've been transformed in His, in his love is if the light of Christ is shining out of you. The only way that, that is journey, the journey is coming out of that light is if at some point you took a journey inward to see all the things you had going on in, inside of you. And see, this should sound uh, familiar if you've been with us from, from the very beginning because I probably spent a good month or so uh, on this chart right here. And if you'll remember, stage one, it was the stages of faith. Right? That stage one is the life-changing awareness that, of God. The life-changing awareness that God is real. Not just that I believe in God, but my life has changed because of that. Stage two is the discipleship, uh, uh, the learning. Learning from scripture. Learning uh, from experience. Stage three is, is the serving life. And, and we spent a good portion of time on this because before we got to that journey inward... Right, where we're going to deal with what we have going on inside. Uh, remember, we talked about this wall that, that people generally hit sometimes. And, and a good portion of Christians spend their Christianity in these three stages. Therefore, they never take the journey inward. And if you're not going to take the journey inward, then that journey outward is not going to happen. If that journey outward does not happen, then it's going to be uh, really hard to be transformed in the love of Christ. And see, when I look at this, um, this is what I want to know. Did you get through the wall? Like this is the, the question that, that I asked myself. Uh, did I get through the wall? And, and when I took an honest assessment of my life, I would like to think, yeah, I, I did. I believe that, that I did get through the wall. But I also think um, that sometimes in life that I like to go back on the other side of the wall. Like, like I, I like to go back over here because when I jump back on, on this other side of the wall, it's a little bit easier, right? You can continue to take this journey inward, and then that will express yourself on the outside, but, but then you're giving that outside into a dark world, and sometimes that can hurt you. And it's like, you know what? I didn't have to deal with any of this on the other side of the wall. I'm going to jump back over here because it's more comfortable, so let me say this, if you're staying comfortable, if you're comfortable where you're at in your faith, then, then you're probably not growing. I love what Jude says, and as a matter of fact, I love the, the whole book of Jude. It's one chapter, right? I say the whole book, it's just one, one chapter. So after this is over, uh, go spend a little bit of time in it and, and read that. But I, I, want to give you, I want to get to verse number three 
But I also think it's really powerful of how he opens the letter. Because remember, Jude is the half-brother of Jesus. Jude's the half-brother of Jesus. So, so if I'm Jude and I'm writing this letter, well, I open up in a way that's like, hey, everybody, make sure you pay attention to me because Jesus is my half-brother. But listen, listen to Jude, what he says. Like he, he doesn't even mention that. Who is he? He's the half-brother of Jesus, but, but who is he actually? He says, Jude, and, and I'm a servant. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. And, and here's who he's writing to. To those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. He says, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. And here it is, verse number three. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation that we share, because that's really easy. Let's just talk about how great life is in Christ and this salvation that we share. I felt compelled to what? I felt compelled to write and urge you to, and I love this, you contend for the faith. Like it's so easy to write about the common salvation that we share, but there's a whole lost world out there. So I have been urged, I have been compelled to write to you to contend for the faith that, want, that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Like if you're claiming Christ, that's you. He's saying go, go contend for the, the faith. And, and this verse, this is what's been, <coughs> excuse me, this is what's been on my mind all week. This is what has been on my mind um, for, for this Bible study. Now, do not get me wrong. The, the common salvation that we share, well, well that's everything. Right? The common salvation, that, that is the message. But as the body of Christ, uh, we, must, we must take this salvation we have and contend for the faith. See, if you look at this chart one more time, don't get on the other side of the wall and then jump back and forth. See, see we cannot jump back and forth in, in lack of faith. We, we cannot jump back and forth in sin. Listen to that. Don't, don't jump back and forth in, in your faith in God. Don't jump back and forth that I'm just going to continue in sin and then I'm going to get out of it. Sin and then get out of it. We, we, we cannot do that. See, we, we must contend for the faith, but how in the world will we ever contend for the faith if, if our faith is lacking? It's hard to contend for the faith if you're lacking in your faith. And see, our, our faith, it will not be lacking if we continue, I believe, to take this journey inward. And when I say take this journey inward, yes, inside of selves, but it's also a journey inward into God's Word. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 5 verse 13. He says, anyone who lives on milk, and when he's saying this, anyone who lives on milk, he's talking about the Word or he's talking about uh, the teachings of Christ. Being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Verse 14, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use, by constant use have trained themselves, watch this, this is huge, to distinguish what? Good from evil. And which if you read this, you can say, well, Ben, that's really easy. It's really simple for me to be able to distinguish good and, and evil. And, and I agree with you. Most of the time. But see, there's that whole thing of what Satan can do. See, Paul writes about it in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. 14. Remember, think of this good and evil. We need to be able to distinguish between the two. Seems like it'd be really easy except for that whole, you know, Satan himself, he masquerades as an angel of the light. See, Satan can make things look really good, or, or I should say what Satan can do is he can take evil things and then he can make, us make it look really good. So how exactly uh, do we uh, distinguish it? How do we tell the difference between good and evil as we move on from milk and, and we get on 
to solid food, which when I read that Hebrews 5, like my mind is racing is, well, then you tell me, please, writer of Hebrews, what exactly is this milk so that I know that, that I, I get off of it, so that I move on from milk on to solid food. That last verse that we went over was Hebrews 5, 14. It's the last verse in chapter 5. Move on from the milk on to the meat. And look, listen how uh, 6 1 starts. He says, Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teaching. So, therefore, let us move beyond, we could insert the milk, right? The milk that he's talking about at the end of 5. He says, Let us move on uh, beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. Watch this. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts to lead to death. Talking about sin. Like it shouldn't be a Bible study that's every week. It's like, please stop sinning. Please stop sinning. Please stop sinning. Repent, repent, repent. You're the body of Christ. How are you going to contend for the faith if you're still living in sin? Watch what he says next. Not, not acts that lead to death and, and faith in God. Like we believe in a God that sent His Son, that, that died for us, that resurrected three days, that ascended up into heaven, that sent the Holy Spirit of God to live inside of us. Why would our faith be lacking? If your faith is lacking, you will never contend for the faith. So if we continue on this journey, right, this, this journey of faith that is in Christ, right, enjoy that journey. See, if we'll continue on the, the, this journey, the life-changing awareness, the discipleship, discipleship, the serving life, we get through the wall, we're taking this journey inward, then that journey outwards, what eventually will happen is we're going to be transformed in His love, much like if you'll look at this filming, see how we transformed. It was all a, a prog progress, right? Right? process. It was all a process. And, and here's what I say about this process. I know I made a lot of jokes about each and every one of them. I enjoyed that process. And I also sit here and I enjoy being able to look back and see, wow, this is what God has done over this last year and a half. And that's what I want to see with all of our lives. It's like, you know what, moving forward, let's all not just be transformed, but be transformed in his love. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us, God. Thank you for uh, who you are and what you do in our lives. I pray for everyone that is watching, God. I thank you for just the time that you've given us in these Bible studies. Uh, I pray that it was uplifting, uh, that it encouraged people, God, that it convicted people where they needed to be convicted. Lord, I just thank you for giving me the ability to uh, stand up and, and teach your word. What a privilege, Lord, and I'm very grateful for it. I pray that you be with us in the coming days and weeks and months as we move into our uh, Bible study in September, God, as we come together, that we enjoy fellowship with one another, but most importantly, that we continue to grow in your word. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in. And for those of you who are out there thinking like, Wow, Ben, after 70 times, you really got this baby down. I bet you don't mess up at all. Well, here, I hope you enjoy these a lot more and how much, how easy it was to kind of get in the flesh a little bit, trying to get the <laughs> picture just right, and then be led by the Spirit of God to teach. But obviously, we had to change these because we got out of 2020. Now, for this Bible study, <laughs> we'll start over. <laughs> so oh, we were doing good. We were jamming too, weren't we? Oh, I mean that man. if I can look at a calendar of what today's date was and go all the way back to March of 2020 and count every Wednesday, then this is actually our 70th, 70th, 70th. <laughs> Can I see it's Half check one, check, check, check one, check two. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Boy, you think we'd have this baby down? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Woo!